Hey everybody, Dr. R here. In this video, we're gonna introduce some parameters of physiologic function. So we'll talk a little bit about the stroke volume, some variables that are particularly high yield that influence the stroke volume. We'll talk a little bit about the heart rate, Frank Sterling mechanism, cardiac output, mean arterial pressure, and a little bit about coronary blood flow. So a lot uh, to talk about, so let's get started. So the stroke volume in general, you know, when you're thinking about stroke volume, you're thinking about the amount of blood that's ejected from the heart with each beat. So let's just say that this is our left ventricle. And I wanna say for all intensive purposes, I'm primarily gonna be discussing the left ventricle when I talk about stroke volume, okay? Unless otherwise explicitly stated, because that's really how these questions get asked. Usually we're talking about the left ventricle. We could be talking about the right ventricle, okay? But um, let's just start with the basics here. So stroke volume, again, it's primarily gonna be the amount of blood that's ejected with each beat. So let's just say, that I am in diastole, okay? So we're just gonna say that we're in diastole, okay? And what happens in diastole? Well, diastole is our filling phase, right? So the left atrium is going to have some passive filling. There'll be an atrial kick at some point, and we're gonna fill the left ventricle, okay? So this is diastole. Then at the end of diastole, I'm left with some volume, okay? After I filled, that's gonna be the end diastolic volume. It makes sense, right? The volume, at the end of diastole, right? That's the, the end diastolic volume. Now, after diastole, I'm going to go through systole. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through systole. And while I'm in systole, I'm gonna have some of that blood ejected. Okay, maybe not all of the blood's ejected, you know, some fraction of the blood is ejected. Okay, so this was maybe what I started with, that was my end diastolic volume. And now at the end of systole, okay, which is what this picture represents, I'm gonna be left with some volume, okay? That's gonna be the volume at the end of systole and systolic volume, okay? And then this process will repeat. We'll go back into diastole, we'll fill, right? Then we'll have an end diastolic volume, we'll contract the heart, inject that blood, and we'll be left with an end systolic volume. So the point is, if I take the end diastolic volume and I subtract it from the end systolic volume, I'll get the volume that I ejected, which is my stroke volume. Okay, so this volume here in pink, that's the stroke volume. Okay, so the stroke volume is equal to the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume, which is what we see here, right? It's the difference between these two volumes. Okay, that's the stroke volume. That's the blood that got ejected from the heart, from the left ventricle into the aorta. Now, if we wanted to figure out what percentage of blood was ejected from what we started with, right? So we would take the blood that we started with okay, which is the end diastolic volume, and we would subtract the end systolic volume, right? That would get us the stroke volume. Okay, this is the amount of blood that we ejected. So we can take the stroke volume and divide it by the amount of blood that we started with initially. That will tell us the fraction, right? If I ejected all of the blood in the left ventricle, then my stroke volume would be the same as the end diastolic volume, right? If I started with, I'm just gonna make a number up, 150 milliliters, and my stroke volume was 150, right? I would have ejected all of that blood out. This ratio would be equal to one. That would be 100% of the blood ejected out. Now in real life, that doesn't really happen, okay? Like I said, usually there'll be some blood left in the left ventricle, but this is just to kind of get you thinking about it. But usually, uh, ejection fraction is usually gonna be greater than 50%. That's a pretty good ejection fraction. Now if it drops under 50%, we might have some systolic dysfunction. In other words, we're not ejecting enough blood from the ventricle. And usually the stroke volume will be about 70 milliliters. And I don't think you have to memorize all these numbers. Usually they'll give you a reference range, but they're gonna kind of come into play in a second, so I'm just kind of introducing it. Now, the last thing on here, I'm gonna talk about this in the next slide. The end diastolic volume is essentially gonna be synonymous with your preload. In other words, the amount of blood that comes back to the heart will determine how much end diastolic volume you have. If I have more blood that comes back to the heart, I'm gonna have a higher end diastolic volume. If I have less blood that comes back to the heart, I'll have a lower end diastolic volume. So these two are thought to be synonymous as preload represents the amount of blood returning to the heart. The contractility on the other hand, if I have more contractility, I'm gonna eject more blood, generally speaking. So as the contractility goes up, the end systolic volume should go down. Okay, so these two are related in some way. Now they're not proportional, okay? So that's not what this is saying. They're not proportional, but the contractility will influence the end systolic volume, okay? So when you think about end systolic volume, you might also think about contractility, right? A higher contractility will get more of this blood injected out into the aorta.